So place a medium sized stinger hook in your vise. Then start your thread a little behind the hook eye and bring your thread back to the bend of the hook. Now pluck a single white marabou feather and stroke the fibers rearward. Measure out about a hook shank length on the feather and then tie that feather in on top of the hook at that measurement. Trim off the waist part of the feather at an angle and then clean up that section with a few wraps. I also like making one or two wraps under the tail to help keep it raised up. Now pluck out three strands of pearl crystal flash and align the tips. Then tie those in on top of the marabou feather with the flash sticking out slightly more than the feather tail. Pull the forward facing strands rearward and tie those down as well. And then clip them to the same length. Now prepare an olive marabou feather and tie that in on top of the rest of the tail at the same length as the white marabou. Now cut a taper at the end of an olive rabbit zonker strip. And then measure that strip so the end of the hair is about the length of the feathers. Now pull back the feathers at the tie-in spot to show a bare hide. And then tie it down with three to four very tight wraps. And pull back the hide and make a few wraps in front of it. So earlier this week, I showed a video on how to make a dubbing brush. I suggest you watch that video since I will be using that brush for the next step. Tie that brush in right in front of the rabbit strip and then clip off any excess with wire cutters. Then advance your thread up to just shy of the hook eye. So I find grasping the end with hackle pliers really helps wrap this. You want to make sure and pull the fibers rearward with every wrap and make some open spiral wraps on the hook shank until you reach your thread. And then use a bodkin to separate the fibers from the brush to make a nice tie-in spot. And then tie this down tightly with two to three wraps. Then pull everything rearward and make a few wraps in front of the brush as well. Clip off the excess, which should leave you about half a brush left. If there is excess wire, make sure and flatten that on the hook shank and tie it down. And then smooth out the tie-in point with a few wraps. Take your bodkin again and pick out this brush. It will help to relieve any trap fibers and ensure everything is angled rearward. Split the fibers at the very top of the hook and stroke them downward. Then pull the zonker strip up over the hook and tie that down tightly, right behind the hook eye. Then trim off any waste from the zonker and clean up the head with a few tight wraps. You can now whip finish your fly. So we're going to trim the brush slightly so the tail looks like this. By the way, I like tying a few of these tails in a row before advancing to the front part of the fly. It helps me keep consistency on both the tail and the rest of the streamer. So first stroke all the fibers downward. Then carefully make one cut angled toward the hook eye, making sort of a triangle. Then I like to trim the sides as well to round them off. But whatever you do, trim slowly. You can take more off, but you can't put more on. So once you're happy with the shape, go ahead and apply some head cement to the whip finish. Now I like using this UV resin instead of head cement because it cures so quickly and creates a nice glossy finish. Now for the front part of the fly. Place a large size stinger hook in your vise then we'll need to keel it slightly. Making five to six wraps with .025 size lead wire will help keep this fly swimming upright. 
Now start your thread somewhere up the hook shank a bit and wrap down to the lead wraps. We will want to cover these wraps so there is no lead showing through. Basically we're just turning this into an olive pump. Then bring your thread back up to about halfway between the hook shank and paint on some super glue on this lead bump. Now let's get some wire, making sure it's long enough to extend past the hook shank. I'm using intruder wire here, but any coated wire should do well. Tie this in so one end extends out to about the hook eye. Then tie it down tight and bring your thread back to just shy of the initial tie-in point. And fold over the wire to tie that down as well. This should keep the wire from pulling out on strong fish if you tie it down tight enough. Then tie the wire down to just past the bend of the hook. Then come back up slightly to rest your thread a little past the hook point. Insert a bead onto the wire for a bit of separation. By the way, I got a package of these beads at Walmart for like 99 cents. You really don't have to spend much. Then thread your tail in, hook point down, and put the wire back through the bead. Then pull your wire tight to make just a small loop past the bead. However, make sure it's positioned vertically, as this will help keep the hook point resting correctly. If your loop is rotated at all, just play with it until you're happy with its orientation and size of the loop. Then tie it down tight with many very tight wraps, all the way back to the initial tie-in point. Then back up a little past the last wire. And fold that over and tie down to just shy of the bump of the last wire. Clip off the excess wire with your cutters, and then clean up that section with some tight wraps. Now it's very important to paint on some super glue, right at the end spot where the wire is tied in. Then you can paint all the way up the hook shank as well. To keep it out of the way, and lessen your risk of hooking yourself, take a hair clip and clip the hook point down with it. So measure out a zonker strip so the hide extends to just about the start of the last hook. Find where the tie-in point will be on that zonker, and then pull the hair back for a cleaner tie-in spot. Wetting your fingers does help. Tie the zonker in at that spot, very tightly with three to four wraps. Then pull it back and make a few wraps in front of it. So normally I would be tying a half size length of dubbing brush here, but I already used it for last few flies. So here's a full length piece. Tie it in tightly, and no need to clip the end if it doesn't extend past the hook eye. So the same way you did the tail, make open spiral wraps with this up the hook shank, ensuring that you pull all the fibers rearward with every wrap. So right here I clipped the brush in half to show you what it would end up being like to tie in a half size piece. Once you reach the end, just keep wrapping the wire around the hook, pulling everything rearward. Since it's wire, it will stay wrapped tightly around the hook. Then capture it and smooth out the section with tight wraps. So like on the tail, we'll need to pick out the brush with our bodkin. And separate the top part as well. However, now we're going to want to tie in a pink brush which is made exactly the same way as the white brush, just with pink craft fur and ice dub. Wrap this brush around three to four times and capture it. One of these pink brushes should tie three to four of these flies. Pick out the brush and split both brushes on top once again. Then pull the zonker strip up over the brushes and tie down tightly right in front of them. Of course clip off the waist and clean up that section with tight wraps. So at this point I like to whip finish my fly and paint a little super glue on that whip finish. Then take the streamer out of your vise and we're going to trim it the same way that we trimmed the tail, with the back section longer than the front. Also, round off the squared edges on the side. Now place your fly back in the vise and start your thread once again. 
Pull out some olive laser dubbing and pull apart in your fingers multiple times to align the fibers. This is about how much you want, and after a few flies you'll learn the right amount, so it's maybe about your thumb's thickness when allowed to be fluffed out. And place this dubbing on top of your fly, right in front of the rabbit strip, and tie down in the center of the dubbing brush with 4-5 to five tight wraps. Do the same thing with the white laser dubbing, and tie that in on the bottom of the fly in the same manner. Then pull all the forward facing dubbing rearward, and make multiple tight wraps in front of the dubbing to create sort of a thread dam to hold the dubbing rearward. Pick out the dubbing a bit with your bodkin, and then pinch the sides to cover your thread wraps. Pick out the dubbing even more, and then comb it rearward with a fine tooth comb. So as you can see, this way of tying the dubbing allows you to cover the sides so your thread wraps aren't exposed. We will do one more set of dubbing right behind the eye of the hook. Tie both the top olive section and the bottom white section in the exact way as before, pinching, picking, and combing it out again. Then whip finish your fly. At this point I like taking my fly out of the vise and combing it until I'm happy with the shape. Now this fly is fishable, however I like to add some eyes. You'll need to separate the dubbing a bit to expose some thread wraps for this. Place a drop of gel type super glue onto the thread wraps just behind the whip finish. Now you can place an eye on it and squeeze tightly to ensure that it's pushed up against the thread wraps on your hook shank. This is going to be the strongest point of attachment. Do this on the other side, trying to align the eyes as closely as possible to each other. Firmly squeeze the eyes together and wait a few minutes for them to set. So as you can see, this technique of dubbing head and eye placement makes for a really thin yet tall head. So it's going to cut through the wind when casting, yet still have a large profile. After applying the eyes, and when they're fully set, I like combing out the fly one last time. Sometimes after applying the eyes, the dubbing head can be a bit bushy, so there's nothing wrong with trimming this. But when trimming, please trim slowly, and with small cuts. If you over trim, you could ruin the look of the head, so do so carefully. For the last step, I like applying some head cement to the whip finish for added security. I like using this UV resin though, because I'm going to apply this thickly so it bleeds up over the eyes for added support with the eyes as well. And there we have it, a good 5-6 to six inch articulated streamer. These do take a while to tie, but they're very durable. As you might notice with the underwater footage, the rabbit strip on the tail and behind the front of the hook are lifting up. This is because the water has not saturated the hide yet, and therefore it wants to float. Over time of fishing this, that will start to lay down more flat, and you will get much better movement with this fly. Unfortunately that never really happened while filming this. From above it looked great to me, but I didn't notice this till after filming. And I've tested it after, but I couldn't refilm it, and allowing this fly to soak for 1-2 to two minutes will help alleviate this issue. You can tell at the end of this filming that the tail itself started to relax and flow a little better. So I want to remind you that the list of materials are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the show more and expand the section to view. I have also provided links to these materials with the best prices I could find online. Well thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please share with your friends. And also do me a favor and hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.